Hey everybody, it's uh, Chan Chai, and uh, today I'm going to cover the Golden Lever um, specifically. Um, and this video is actually for a friend, but we're going to talk about the Golden Lever itself um, and explain the components of it and how it functions and um, how to do some of the tunings on it. Uh, there's a lot that can be done with the Golden Lever. There's, uh, I could probably make a lot of videos about the Golden Lever, but this video is especially for my friend, my mentor in VF, and um, you know one of the people I admire the most in the Virtual Fighter community, and that's Adam Yuki. He uh, is one of my mentors, as I mentioned. Um, he has consistently been one of the very, very, very best Virtual Fighter players outside of Japan. He wouldn't say that, but in America, he might acknowledge that. Um, and uh yeah typically um you know for for almost uh for basically over two decades he's been one of the very strongest and for the past decade uh basically is always uh spoken in the same breath as gentleman thief those two basically make the top two of america and are like the targets for everyone in the north american community to beat and to um learn from uh, we are a community that learns and grows together, um, and we are also very competitive. And Adam uh, grew up in the rough arcades of New York City and, um, you know, had access to strong players from all over the world. And um, But he's always been very kind, uh, generous, shares knowledge, uh, but fights with good pride and good skills and definitely uh, earns his place. Anyhow, um, and the Japanese players do know him. <laughs> so, anyhow, um, yeah, um, Adam, this video is for you. Uh, this is the golden lever. I've ge I'm sending you two golden levers, right? This first one is the stock golden lever. This is the stock Japanese golden lever, and we're gonna break it down today. We're gonna break down uh, the modified uh, build that I'm sending you as well. Um, some of the parts and what they do and then I'm also going to talk about some buttons because I'm also sending you uh, a set of um, crown 202s which are my favorite um, because but also because I think they just they aesthetically you're going to love them but I think performance you're going to love them too however I'm also going to send my most recommended for tournaments and I do encourage you to use this one at Evo Japan uh, which are going to be gamer finger buttons, and I'll explain why as well. So let's go down to the Golden Lever. Let's, this is the Golden Lever Japan build. As you can see, this is a box for Golden Lever. It's a beautiful box, and I always treat them well. Um, normally, there's a sticker that's like X, kind of like a seal here. I took it off and I put it on the bottom. You can put it anywhere you want, but it's on the bottom here. It's a Japan to indicate that this is a Japan setup, Japan build. Okay. So let's open the box and let's see what you get when you open up your. Golden Lever Japan. First, you get this booklet. I'm going to use a separate one, but it's nicely presented. It has lots of really important information. But if you lose it, there is a way to easily get that information from this exact booklet. All right. But yes, uh, the best lever is a lever that is configured to your preferences. Welcome to lever tuning and modding. Try millions of combinations to find your perfect setup. Uh, the name of the company that makes it, Arcade Stick Indonesia. And... Uh, I, I really love this company. It's pretty obvious. And I especially love it because I love their products. Um, but they've always been very responsive. And their heart is in a wonderful place. And they constantly make efforts. And um, honestly, uh, they nail it a lot. They keep, they keep raising the bar. Anyhow, um, that is that. On the back of this booklet, you're going to see a bunch of different setups, the specifications for each one. We're going to use this as a reference today. So you've got the Korean setup, the Japan setup, the hybrid setup, and the Octa setup. Obviously, I got you the Japan setup. I might talk a little bit about the Korean setup so you can understand. Uh, since Adam is used to Japanese levers and I don't think has ever used Korean levers, I might just use it as a reference to explain some things. But again, we're focusing on the Japan setup on this video. Maybe another time I can talk about Korean setups, even though that's also not my expertise, but I've definitely been using a bunch of them. All right. Uh, but what we can say about Japanese setups, what separates them? 
Uh, Japanese levers typically, um, normally they don't use a grommet like golden lever. Golden lever is a wonderful hybrid where you can, where it's using the Korean lever technologies, but um, the Japan setup really, really makes a wonderful uh, combined setup where you get the benefits of the Korean setups, but in something that feels a lot like a Japanese setup. That's, again, what's amazing about Golden Lever. Uh, so the Japan setup basically is going to have shorter throw, uh, quicker actuation. It uses a square uh, collar. Um, collar, we'll get into that, but uh, basically things move in a square as opposed to a circle. Korean lovers like to use a circle and there's a good reason for that. Um, but the square is definitely wonderful when you get used to it. Um, that is part of the learning curve with learning Japanese levers is getting used to that square. In America, we grew up in the 80s and 70s, 80s and 90s uh, and 2000s uh, using circular uh, gates. So, all right. Um, generally, Japanese have a you have a springy tension, right? But we're using grommets in this system. We'll, we'll get into that. Um, but the tensions are lower on the Japanese setup. Tensions are higher on the Korean setups. And then, um, yeah, the golden lever body uh, is the one I really like a lot to feel out. And then, uh, but the black body is also great. And one of your builds is a black body. So you've got both. Um, yeah, so we'll get into what each part does and why. Um, but generally all you need to know, uh, basically short throw, it, the lever doesn't move that far. Um, on top of that, um, we are using a ball top that is preferred for the Japanese setups. Um, but I'm going to talk about tops later. And then um, there's quick actuation, meaning like you're going to hit your inputs really, really quick. And um, and again, with that short throw, people that play on Japanese levers typically like to what like to ride the collar or in Japanese, ride the gate, which is like we tend to hit against the wall. We, we move the lever as far as you can move it and we work with that and then we just quickly go back to neutral. So um, yeah, let's get into it. So what else is in the box after the book? Um, so you're gonna have this, which has got the arcade stick Indonesia sticker behind it. And then you've got, and it's a wonderful decal that you could decal as a whole black with the logo or just the logo only. Um, also, we've got the spacers. I've got another set separate so we don't have to take these out of the bag, but these are key to some of the adjustments that we've made on your second build, okay? Um, this is one of the greatest features of Golden Lever, but it's also one of the trickiest ones. Um, but when you get used to it, it's actually super easy, but you just have to get used to it. We'll get into that. All right. This is a wire harness, and the Golden Lever wire harnesses are awesome. They use um, this L-shaped uh, right angle connectors so that it actually makes the wiring a bit cleaner than what they used to use. Used, used to be, um, normally, most of the harnesses that the Korean levers tend to use like this, where you, or Seimitsu levers even do it too, where you just basically plug them directly into the micro switches. The Sanwa doesn't. The Sanwa has a PCB that functions as this harness. Um, but these, so you've got these black points that are connected to the ground. That'll make sense when I show it to you. And then you've got these connectors that is actually the input. So the micro switches themselves corresponding with up, down, left, right. So there you go. And they are color coded and it's good for that for a reason. You get this beautiful golden lever sticker. I love these. Um, all right, so in the box now, I'm gonna take out this foam. Keep it nice and neat in the box. And this is your Japanese golden lever, okay? Now, wonderful thing. If you lose the booklet or you're looking for information or you're just not even at home, uh, but somehow you could take out your, <laughs> your, you could unmount your lever, this right here is a QR code that gets you the manual, the same document right here. So you can always do that. It'll take you to the website. It's great. Uh, ASI, ASI, but of course, upside down, I tend to think of it, it looks like 6V. Um, anyhow, so yeah, it's golden lever and, you know, some good details. And the signature uh, gold white ball top, but I've got you another type of ball top for you, black gold, to better match your the setup you're bringing to um, Evo Japan. And of course, you know, the beautiful uh, golden dust washers. Now the dust washers are great. They are custom fit for for the handle, meaning that 
uh, they have got a lot of different shaft sizes at Golden Lever, but every time that you buy a shaft from Golden Lever, you will get a corresponding same color dust washer, so gold or silver, and it'll be pretty much a perfect fit when it's on your when it's on your setup. It's gonna it's gonna be working perfectly. Uh, over here, it's only flipping because of the collar underneath. All right, so the mounting uh, plate's important. Understand what's top and bottom, and you you can tell by the countersunkness if I unscrew it. I'll show that later. This is the beautiful body made out of polyacetate, I think it's called. It's a uh, POM, P-O-M, same as the ball top, all right? And it's a it's a very good material. Um, and then you can see these micro switches here. And these are the micro switches. Now, Sanwa Japanese levers use, um, do not use this leaf lever system, right? These, uh, these hinged levers that are attached to the micro switches and, but, in Seimitsu levers and pretty much all Korean levers, uh, this is the, this is the norm. Now, um, it should be noted that what's good about this is the switch spacing works because of this too, and um, and so there's a lot of tuning on that end, and there's clean action on it. Um, it's not perfectly symmetrical, so technically, um, you know the like this corner here um this input over here is going to be maybe slightly less than the other so you kind of want to get you like it won't you won't really feel it but you might slightly feel it and if you do slightly feel it um the way you adjust to that when you're using a samitsu lever or a cream lever is to just get used to feeling the micro switches as you play and and you will definitely feel them uh we already feel them on sanwa and sanwas are very light um but you will definitely feel them on these levers and it's great um and yet these are the soft micro switches the a5s so this omron a5 i really like this this is the standard for golden lever they're really good um they're meant to be kind of a modern version a modern uh kind of take on the classic am5s but the am5s are are goaded they're greatest of all time but the thing is, those were made by Panasonic, and Panasonic stopped making micro switches for levers like a long time ago. So, um, so the AM5s are just, you know, now they're just a rare item and they're super expensive. Um, I do have some, but um, really get used to the Armron feel. It's wonderful. Uh, I really like Armron A5s on the Korean steps. They use an A6. All right. So here you can see the shaft in the middle. You need a flat-headed screwdriver whenever you want to take the ball top off. Um, and you'll need to take the ball top off to disassemble. Um, underneath that, um, that shaft, the end of the shaft, you can just see that black bit, and that's the E-clip. It looks like a half moon, kind of, or a little more than a half moon. Um, you're going to need a, a mini micro flathead screwdriver. All right, that's what I use to pop them off. You can use a few other things as well. Uh, we'll go into the assembly in a bit. These bolts are the same bolts that um, bolt down the body, this white, this whole thing, the assembly we call the body, um, to the mounting plate. And so when you take them off, these bolts are gone. But these bolts are important for the custom spacing. All right, let's go over the parts again from top to bottom. Um, so I'm gonna set this right here. We've got my screwdriver set here to help you understand um, what we've got. So um, so. On my uh, iFixit screwdriver set, we're gonna I'm gonna take like the largest size of the flatheads. Um, this is not properly adequate for. This is a wonderful flathead screwdriver, but you want like a really big beefy screw uh, flathead screwdriver for taking ball tops or handles off the lever because you don't want to risk stripping your the shaft, right? So you're gonna have to be very careful when you do that. So I'm gonna take the ball top off and we'll get to this. So 
So all we had to do was just loosen, loosen the ball top a little bit, and that screws off like that. So you're familiar with that. Okay, so let's start. Let's start with the handles. Um, sorry, sorry for the sideways. Okay, so let's talk about handles, ball tops. Um, I still recommend you using the ball top first, but I want you to try out the bat tops too, and I'm going to send you one. Um, this is a standard weighted uh, ball top. It should be similar in weight to the one that you have on your on your existing setups and you should keep them and use them um ball tops are really good on the japanese setups and it's really good on this other setup that i'm sending you which has the custom uh short square collar we'll get into that later i would recommend ball top on that but i still think the first lever you should play with is going to be the japanese lever i think you need to spend a good day with it i think you're going to love how it feels it's going to calibrate how you feel about the golden lever and kind of see the benefits i think you're going to like it um, when you use my setup we were i was using a japanese setup with just a, the only thing i changed was the tension the grommet and you it was using a different handle but ball top fantastic on it and the throw the the stock Japanese setup is really good, so you can use that as your point of reference for making future tweaks. Um, yeah, so handles, ball top. I still recommend because the advantages to the ball top is, especially on a Japanese setup, is speed. Um, it's really good for player one side. The downside, in my opinion, is the player two side. We develop techniques with this that allow us to be incredibly good on player one side, and that's because hitting the rightward directions is really easy with your left hand, and um, we end up manipulating uh, around, and, and we end up developing really good techniques for it. Um, but even with changing the collar, you're gonna end up having some adjustments to your technique. Uh, we'll talk about that, but the ball top generally is fast. My gripe with the ball top is just simply player two side. Player two side's still really good, but player one side is so good that you might have an imbalance or a preference on player one and two side. That said, you know, looking Tekken, uh, because of how, I think Tekken has some of the most difficult strictest input requirements on like advanced techniques um and overall usage in play so i think in tekken player one and player two side is simply separated because of that difficulty curve um i think when the tech if the tekken community embraces like uh WASD or hitbox um we may see some change to that but actually even those inputs have a pref have like preferred directions and preferred inputs too um i don't think there's getting around it much but i would say that that would bring us to like the bat top right so that top is like we're gonna use my nice shiny bat top okay i'm gonna send you a black gold bat top and i'm gonna send you a lightweight one this is a standard weighted bat top if we were to put it on there normally without using the the washers that come with it um it's gonna sit pretty low um and bat tops are really good i encourage you to spend a couple days trying out the bat top after you've gotten used to the golden lever and that's because i know there's not much time but i recommend it because the bat top has some distinct advantages and you're going to learn different techniques now with a ball top we're used to wedging like two fingers around the shaft either this way or this way for most players uh very rarely have i ever seen like this the, the total wine grip but usually the wine grips like this one um i my grip is like this right and then i use my thumb to manipulate some things yeah and we're like tapping directions right so bat top you're gonna it's gonna take a little bit not much just for a player of your caliber um and even for a player like me uh it only takes like less than a day to get used to a bat top but then you start to you know like at first it's uncomfortable but once you get but once you get used to it there's and we grew up with bat tops in american setups but these are a little different uh, once you get used to it you start to appreciate some of the accuracy you have on the player two side um the the extended height um gives you the ability to really manipulate on the left side better and you just kind of start developing techniques that work and so i think player one and player two like you your player one side might actually drop slightly but it'll get it'll catch back up for the most part but your player two side i believe will improve if you get used to the bat top and i recommend these are the two starting points on handles 
Um, but then we can get into other experimental handles uh, later. But I think, you know, in the first month or two, you should definitely start with these two. Um, but I'll talk quickly about the others, okay? Um, a recent, like in the last few years, bullet tops started by the, especially spurred on by the Nobi lever, which was inspired by, um, by basically the, um, the gear shifter um, in a sports car um, by Seimitsu. Uh, Seimitsu was creating a lever for the player Nobi as a Tekken player and I think what they were trying to achieve with that lever was basically a lever a Japanese style lever that might be that might be really good for Tekken that could compete against like what people were liking about the Korean levers now it's not exactly like a Korean lever it's a very unique lever in its own with its own feel and I like it a lot but, um, but it does try to ben retain the benefits of a Japanese lever, but give you that player one, player two balance um, of, of left and right direction techniques. Um, the big deal on the Nobi lever also on, this, on its normal pro build, which is, the, um, which is that like it doesn't spin, right? Japanese levers were used to spinning. When you play this golden lever, it's not gonna spin. That, that too is gonna be an adjustment for you, Adam. But, it's a really good one. You're going to like it. It's going to improve that player one, player two balance. Just that alone does it too. So when you get used to using a non-spinning ball top, um, you might lose, just barely lose a little speed because of like how slick it is when you're playing on the Sanwa. But you're going to get accuracy. And in VF, you know, we didn't have to be the fastest, but we did need fast. Yeah, it's more than fast enough, but you're gonna get more accuracy. Um, I think your technique will just slightly adjust, but you're gonna. I think you're gonna like how how it is after a bit, and, and it might convert you to be a person that wants um, some uh, a lever that doesn't spin. But I still love playing on on levers that spin. But um, but I have found that that does contribute to a better player one, player two bounce, even if it's just slight. But I I feel it. Um, the bullet top obviously has this unique feel. It is the same height as the the golden lever bullet top is a unique one too because the normal the normal bullet top is actually pretty heavy. Um, it's a heavy handle, and this one is super light. This is comparable to the to the hollow lightweight levers I'm sending you, handles I'm sending you. Um, I love how this one feels a lot. This is actually my favorite of the bullet tops right now. But I but I've been sp I spent so much time last summer trying all like trying as many as I could. And my favorites ended up being the golden lever, probably because of how light it is, and also the um, the wooden ones of all things by Bueno Woodworking. So I'll make a video of that sometime. Uh, so yeah, this is the bull top, very popular. But again, that's actually let me clarify that bullet tops are kind of controversial. Not in a, it's not that people hate them. It's that these feel very unique. They do not feel like a ball top or or a bat top, and that is an important point. That is the point of them, but um, but I've seen that even for me, it took me a while to get used to them and to really like them. That's also why I don't recommend going to a bull top right now, right before Evil Japan. It's something that you should spend like a month with and then decide if you really like them. I've gotten really used to it, and I like it a lot. And I do think that if I only judged it from one week. I wouldn't really like them but then after a month i actually grew to really like them a lot but also um you know so i think they have very good merit and i think there are some people where these are the perfect handle but um but for a lot of people they're gonna have to try it and that's it's hard to do that in this community without friends that are willing to let you borrow their setups so that's the bullet top all right now uh golden lever has also released i already alluded to uh lightweight tops um i don't know if that was supposed to be a secret but i but i've been able to try some lightweight tops and we know that the secret one of the secrets for why i really love this was because of how lightweight it is i do think when we're talking now that we're talking about weight i think that most players most players would prefer and like heavyweight handles but i do think that at some point um it's kind of like tennis uh, if you get to a certain point with your technique or feel, then instead of kind of like how that, uh, how the weight helps you kind of just really quickly get to certain things, um, I think 
you people might start want want to start considering lightweight tops and for me that that revelation came with the senjo ball top but used on a sanwa unmodified i just love how that feels and what that did was that thing is just super lightweight lighter than even these light the lightweights here that i'll show today but also it's um that one is grainy like it's not um it doesn't polish the wood it, it keeps it like in its natural grain and that graininess adds to the field significantly like dramatically so that on some setups like heavy setups i i really don't recommend it because it's that's like feel overload for me but um it to the point of making it uncomfortable but playing that thing on like this japanese setup playing the senjo ball top on um even this setup that i built for you and on the sanwa without modification and then sanwa's with different springs i i love how it feels on those it is out of this world because I'm I'm feeling the switch everywhere. I, I there's something to be said about feel. It's very much like when I play tennis, I actually use a, a racket that is almost no power but all feel and um, and control. And it's very similar in principle to that. And I have a feeling that you actually like would like that too. But we don't know until you try. Um, but I think you would actually like feel. But I think at first maybe you like weight. Uh, that said. The Tekken levers, uh, it's kind of the out Tekken levers kind of need the weight. And that's because they're Tekken levers really use the grommet system to allow precisions because they have like two, they have multiple layers of their technique. What's going on there is they're using that high tension and that grommet, which has a very dynamic tension. And they're using long throw to create, um, to allow them to use their force and resi the resistance from it, um, the resistance from the lever and the full range from going all the way to also going a little bit to just touching the micro switch with a small circle. So think of like moving in a small circle and then moving in a big circle. Tekken players are using that to get their timing precise on when they're hitting certain inputs. When they're going from, uh, I'm gonna use numeric notation, but, or let's use compass notation. When they're going from east to southeast, right? Um, they're they're trying to be be very precise when they do that and like when it happens and that they don't accidentally move past it down to south right stuff like that 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 would be an example of what's going on with the Tekken levers why Korean levers are really good for Tekken is because you can get this precision when you're using something that kind of works against you with its resistance but the long throw allows you to have uh, like riding the collar um, technique versus just move the move the lever just a tiny bit so that I can just hit the switches like a Japanese lever. That's kind of what's happening with the Korean levers. That's why um, the that's why their vocabulary will be a little different from how a VF player looks at the lever. Um, VF players just really go like <laughs> I just want to go from neutral to a direction and back to neutral like like really well, really fast, really easy and I need my diagonals to be easy. Korean levers, uh, or the Tekken levers, um, kind of have the, they, they have difficult and on purpose diagonals, as well as, uh, you know, but also easy when you go small circle technique. So something like that. Um, so they use, they use the full area as a way to control the accuracy of their inputs and speed. VF doesn't need, anything like that at all um so so vf does vf actually just needs speed and like and and relative accuracy but in a different sense than the tekken levers okay so another handle this is a bean top right um this is the shorter they have two types they have a bean and they got capsule bean is meant to be a hybrid of it's lightweight but it's meant to be a hybrid of the ball top and the bat top, right? You can see it's shorter. The bean one is shorter. It's like in between, right? It's just a little taller than the ball, a little shorter than the bat top. And it's meant to have a bottom and top, kind of like the ball so that you can still have that, um, you can you can grip it. Like it has the same clearance when you put it on the top as like the ball top. So it sits kind of, it rides kind of on top of the shaft. And so you're gonna have your wine techniques, your techniques from this is preserved, but now you've got something a little taller, but you can still put your thumb on top, which some people, this is great. And this is just what they want. This is like, I do it too. Uh, it's going to be more important on something like this, but actually 
I, I still go back to normal ball top on this short square setup, which we'll talk about later. Um, but this thing is really good. I, I've been using this handle a lot lately and I like it a lot. Um, this is more geared towards the Japanese lever players. For the Korean lever players, they've got um, yeah, another setup. This is, this is the hybrid setup and you can see how much taller you can see how much taller that is. this is, right? It, it's a lot taller. So, yeah. Um, and that's the capsule top. So, capsule top's really good. Um, and the hybrid setup has a circular collar. Um, you can look up that information if you want, just to kind of get an idea, but we'll get back to talking about our details here. So that's that's the section talking about the handles. I know that went kind of long. I'm kind of long-winded. Hope you don't mind. So we've got our dust washer, and again, these are fit for the sta for the shafts. Okay. Um, and this is upside down. Why would you upside down? Okay. So as you can see here, when you get up here, we have the mounting plate. And this is the collar. Let's change our screwdriver and this out. I'll be right back, one sec. That said, I'm really excited to be seeing, I, I was so happy to see you in New York last month. I'm excited to see you again um, in uh, Japan. And I just, and thanks a lot for the sessions we've had. Sorry that there was lag recently. I'm still working to resolve it. I resolved some of it, but I'm gonna try to do a bigger solution soon. So right now, uh, I'm just unscrewing the, um, I'm unscrewing the mounting plate, the bolts that hold the body to the mounting plate so we can take a look inside. And this one requires a Phillips screwdriver. Now we only need one type of Phillips screwdriver, but it's important that you know which, that you get the right kind, okay? A lot of these components from Asia, from Japan, use the JIS uh, type of screws. Uh, Japanese, I don't know the, the vocabulary, but basically the Japanese type screws, um, you need, uh, so, Let's see if we can get a good picture of that on the screwdriver. This is a little more flat on the, on the at the end of it, as you can kind of see. And what you want to make sure is that when you put the screwdriver into the screw, that there's no wiggle. That like, if you were to hold them both firm in place, right? If we got to the very bottom, that there's no wiggle. And you can do that by just taking the bit and putting the bit on the screw. And just, you would know that there's, you would know if there's wiggle or not. You don't want wiggle. You want it to sit perfectly there because if there is wiggle, you can strip the screw. It happens a lot and it happens the worst on Sanwa JLFs. So I'm not trying to bag on Sanwa. I love the Sanwa JLF, but on the Sanwa JLF, like the bolts that hold the body to the mounting plate are typically like, they're very easy to strip if you're not using the right screwdriver. And even if you're using the right screwdriver, if you just, if you're being too loose with it, you can totally strip them. So. Again, these mounting plates are awesome. They work with, um, they also work on Japanese arcade cabinets, right? That's what I think these side ports of the holes are for, actually. They work on a lot of different setups. So you can tell up and down is like relatively here. Later on, I'm gonna tell you how to, to know which direction is which on the switch, but we'll get to that. And I'll, show, and, and I'll make it very clear, so. Okay, so the handle, now we know, handle contributes to your technique, how you're gonna interact with the lever, and it, and it contributes, and, and I believe it influences player one, player two balance as well, um, but also speed. And so sometimes you might just wanna stick with the ball top, you know, um, but I think you should spend some time on the bat top just to try it out and see if that actually makes your player two performance where you want it, and, with, and if, the, um, if any type of sacrifice to player one side, is is negligible or if it's significant okay all right so here we go taking off the mounting plate of our of this japanese setup brand new one i'm sending to you okay so now we remove the mounting plate 
Now again on the mounting plate, you need to see the top has, obviously this one is indicated what's top because of the sprinting. If it was blank, uh, it's countersunk. And so you know that it's countersunk, so the top part is like here and the it's narrowed out at the bottom. All right, important to know. So here's the body here. Now, Japanese le or Korean levers use the collar to restrict. It, it's a combination, like the throw is determined by the shaft's width and then, but it's also determined by the collar. But mainly the, the width is what we use to, to change the throw. The collar just gives us how we restrict it. Is it a circle? Is it an octagon? Is it a square? This is a square. And if you look on the bottom side, you can kind of see that squarish shape. It's not a circle. Okay, we'll make it clear. Now, what's important to know is that the square collar piece does not have any indicator. Normally on the upper right, uh, certain special collar pieces have it marked. And so short square, the one that I got you on the other setup has an SS right up here. On this one, no such marking, but we can tell it's kind of a square shape. There is a shape called squircle. How would you know? Uh, that one will have an SQ up here, okay? Now the circle and the, the circle doesn't have any indicator because it's such a, again, square and circle are standard. And then octagon I think doesn't either. Um, but on the Golden Lever website, you can see what they are and they give you pictures on the site so you can see how you would identify them. But I'm only sending you a square and a short square. So I don't really plan to send you any of the other special setups, but Golden Lever has a lot of colors. They all matter. They even have combination ones and asymmetrical ones that cannot, that I haven't seen on any other lever yet. Um, but you know, obviously octagon exists for Sanwa as well. And so the standard ones are square, circle, octagon, um, and then squircle, square circle, which all of them are kind of different. They all have a little slightly different feel and a different philosophy of guiding them. Um, Golden Lever has its own and it's really good, but I, I love the square for like VF and I love the short square. We'll get into that. Um, but octagon's good for some people, you and I probably not. Um, but Octagon is is really good, has its own merits, all right? So this is the collar, and on Korean levers, we ride the collar, we don't ride the gate, all right? Uh, the gate on Japanese levers is on the bottom, right? It's actually below the actuator. It would be like, bef like after we see this E-clip, then we would kind of, actually even past it, at the very top, we would see the gate because it would be like, it would stop the movement at the very bottom of the, of the assembly. But in Korean levers, it happens at the top and that allows us to have custom shaft sizes to change the throw. It's really cool. Okay. Now I can't fully take this apart yet, but I'm gonna show you how we do that. But, um, this here is the clear grommet. Um, so again, we've seen the body here. We see this is the shaft and the shaft goes all the way from top to the very bottom. Now this shaft in the Japanese one is called, is uh, aluminum made to anodize to look like gold. Okay, and it's really good. Uh, if you watch old videos on the golden lever, you might hear people talking about the brass and how some people, the brass corroded and broke, um, but Actually, you can maintain them if you don't have sweaty hands, that's less of an issue. But if you're in a humid area, it could be an issue. Um, I like the brass handles. And for me, I would probably, if I used them, I, I just change them periodically. But I, I don't even think I'd run into the issue much because I'm not I'm not that heavy on, on my levers. Some people are. And a lot of Tekken players are very heavy. And, and some of it's because of the way the techniques work on that. But um, for me, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not that uh, heavy on it, um, but the aluminum shaft is the lightest weight, and I love it, but the standard is stainless steel, and so I am going to send you a stainless steel shaft. Here is a stainless steel shaft, right? And we kind of see... Uh, I don't know if I can do it on the video, but basically... When you use your camera and you can kind of see, yeah, right there. So this is a 12 millimeter shaft, pretty big because this one is an 11 millimeter. 
Uh, these are in a large size, right? Like to get that large door that the Korean levers use, they use nine millimeter or eight millimeter, and sometimes even seven, but really I usually see eight and nines. Um, but the Japanese, uh, but to get the feel of a Japanese lever, like the same, similar throw, the 11 is pretty close to a Sanwa. Um, and 11 and a half and 12 would kind of feel similar to what I felt on Seimitsu levers. Um, 12 is pretty extreme, uh, but it's great. But we'll talk about the rest of the parts. But you can see how it's printed here on what size it is. And again, this is stainless steel. Stainless steel is the heaviest. No, it's not the heaviest. It is, but it is pretty heavy. It's very heavy. It's way heavier than aluminum, right? Aluminum is very light, but I like it. I've grown to really like the anodized aluminum. But stainless steel is a heavier, stronger material. It is kind of the standard of what we use for, for arcade levers. And it's really good. And then there's brass, which I believe is actually quite heavier. And the brass lever are the ones for um, the, what Golden Lever used to make standard. But now they still sell them um, and they're still really good, but they just require a little more upkeep. Like you need to lubricate them more often and you need to make sure that you, that like uh, that you don't get like salts and minerals into it too much, like from sweat. And if you're in a humid environment, you know, just, you know, you would have to just kind of be mindful of it. But again, that it's pretty extreme to get there. Um, but you know, us, us, uh, high level players are a little extreme anyways. So that's why, um, maintenance matters for me. They, but it lasts a long time. But stainless steel, very strong. I'm sending you one of these. And um, aluminum, you're getting two of these because you're getting them in the setups. Aluminum is great. Uh, I really like it. I've grown to really like it. And I think you're not, I don't think you're, the, you're abusive with the lever. So I think you'll be great with that. Okay, so that's the shaft. In golden lever setup, shaft determines throw. Okay, um, it also determines weight by those three categories. Aluminum is lightweight. Um, and so this is kind of a central force, a force that's more central and does affect how, it, how the lever feels. Um, not the only thing though, the actuator does too, but the, um, but you're going to be dealing with the weight of the handle of the shaft. And so aluminum's light stainless steel is probably twice, like two to three times. It's quite a bit heavier. I, I don't have the measurements for for you, but I'll just say it's a lot heavier. And then the brass is even heavier than the stainless steel. So that's your reference there. The Japanese lever uses the lightest weight grommet, the lightest tension grommet. So under this is what we call the core, this circle in the middle here. This is basically like a, it's a bobbin. Um, so Golden Lever calls it a core, um, but um, in general in the Korean, uh, in Korean levers, we call it, a lot of people call it a bobbin because it is like a thread and bobbin. And it's basically what you wrap the, the, um, the grommet around. So, but also it's what, it's between the shaft and the grommet. So, and even in their diagram, they just kind of keep it included. But here's a picture of it. There's two, there are two types, but different weights. So you've got like your, your white standard core and with the spring inside and then also with uh with that rubber layer that actually helps reduce the spin right um the spring itself we'll get into but right now let's talk about this piece it's they're kind of a pain to put on but it's not too bad um on the light tension not hard at all but when you use high tension they're kind of a pain to put on you just have to you do want to muscle it um your your first instinct might be afraid to tear it just muscle it and put it on it'll be fine these things are really built to last and are very strong this is the lightest tension um I'm sending you quite a few of them, but the tensions that I'm sending you, you can see these colors here. And I am sending you uh, the clear, which is the lightest, um, something like a 25. Um, I'm sending you a, um, a green and a blue. Um, it's so tempting to send you a turquoise, but I'm not sure if I'm going to send that. But maybe later, if you tell me you want that, I can bring it to Evo Japan and we can switch it out with that if you decide that uh, the green was not enough. But um, 
but the light tension is good to start with just to kind of get that super smooth feel and something closer to a Sanwa. It's not gonna have the springiness of the Sanwa, but it's gonna, it's similar, it's in the ballpark, but this, you're gonna love the smoothness and you're gonna experience it with this Japanese lever first. So it's gonna be good. Now you'll see that over here in this, this uh, moat is a circle. It's a normal circle because that's normally how the, how the grommets are. But in the, but I'm sending you special grommets. These are new products that came out at the end of last year. Um, I'm sending you, well, I can send you both. So this green one is a normal one. So this is a normal, um, normal green, uh, normal tension uh, grommet. And it has got a very nice resistance. Um, it, it is on the light end, but it's really nice. Firm. This is a blue dual tension. So notice how this is, you've got this cross here. What it's done is these areas have gotten lighter because the intention is to make the diagonals easier for you. It's to make it so that when you move the diagonals, it's just gonna be easier. And so um, this is wonderful for VF and it is it does help because um, one of the complaints for people getting used to Korean levers sometimes is that sometimes those diagonals can be hard, especially if you're using the larger throw. Um, like at larger throw, it's really hard for me to, to nail the diagonals like, like what I'm used to. And this is kind of helps with that. And it's, it's wonderful. Um, it's not the biggest problem because like, even when you use this, you're not going to feel problems with your diagonals. Use this, uh, you shouldn't feel problems with your diagonals, but that's because we're using low throw. If we were using like large throw, that's when we start feeling like having issues with like the, the gap, uh, between, um, between the cardinal directions and the diagonals like grows also with that. And it becomes very difficult. It's like the biggest challenge for a lot of VF players using a Korean lever or transitioning to one is getting used to how the diagonals feel. So um, these are just awesome at that. And it's a cool solution. And it, for me, it's working pretty well. Um, so this blue one is a lot more firm. This is gonna be your really springy one. If you want even higher tension than this later, then uh, we'll talk about, then I can bring like a turquoise for you. I think turquoise is kind of, a, a lot of people really love the turquoise, both tech and NVF players, I think would, would like them. But I think try these first because the smooth, the golden lever smoothness is so good. Um, all right. So bodies, this is, let's see, this body is the white body. And the other setup I've got sending you is the black body, as you can see, it's black there, right? Is there a difference? Yeah, there is. Um, so you see these holes in here. The black body has like things that, these prongs in them that go into these holes and, or that these holes fit through, fit over. And what ends up happening, not completely, but just like half, but what it does is that then the tension is affected. So you've got like kind of extra resistance and this creates a more, neutral snap just a little bit more it's a little more pop it's it's not like an insane amount but you feel it and so the black body actually is a little more popping a little more neutral strong and the white body is uh buttery smooth completely <laughs> so that's what it's good to know and that's why i do want you to try that buttery smooth uh this is still buttery smooth it's just different but um, but that dynamic tension plays different, okay? Uh, having said that, the core, there are differences. The black cores, the white core standard, I haven't sent you any, I don't think I'm sending you a black core this time, but in Japan, if you want to try them, we can. Black cores are oversized, they're bigger. So that puts a, that really makes the tension on the grommets stronger. It's, it's, uh, it's like a reverse, uh, it's kind of a reverse compression. It's like, it's creating more tension in the grommet by basically stretching it out even more, like more than normal and like immediately putting a, a strain on the, on the grommet from the, from like, from default. And so the oversized grommets are definitely worth considering if you feel like you want more pop on your neutral, but I really think these things feel great. And at low tension, at low throw, like, you don't need these things to be like insanely snappy or anything like that. But on high tension Korean setups that are for Tekken, 
that's one of the advantages of grommets is that it's it's like the spring when you go heavy spring right you you have the risk of rebound you have the risk of like hitting directions like the opposite direction you didn't mean to but on the Korean lever setups it's more of like no this thing is going to go back to a firm neutral pretty good without swinging so hard um and they use high tension setups to um so that they can more precisely hit their hit their directions at the timing they need to um which makes the Korean lever so good for Tekken um but at the same time so then things like how we pop this neutral how we solve this neutral thing you know how we make it better each time that's where some of these innovations are coming from uh I would say that this by default the standard is really great and I think you should be very happy with it but I do think at some point there's a time where you'll you might want to try the the black oversized core but um but I think what I'm sending you is more than enough and I think you're going to get amazing performance from from what I send you uh of course I'm biased because I'm the one sending it to you but I hope that helps all right so now we've talked about the top half of the assembly what about the bottom half um how to remove this thing in the assembly of the shaft assembly, okay? Um, um, I might just try to use a separate thing to kind of illustrate it, but uh, let's, yeah, let's, let's illustrate it in multiple parts. First, let's put this thing back together. Thank you for hearing me out so far. I, I'm hoping that this just helps you love your golden lever setups even more and make you want to do a lot more with them because I think these are just so... Um, I, I'm a very proud Golden Lever user for over a year now. And it's just... Um, and actually using the Golden Lever is actually what really got me hooked on this part of the hobby was just customizing the lever to how you want it, adjusting it the way you want it. And, I, and obviously I use a lot of other levers and I love them too. I really do, but Golden Lever is what got me really hooked on this hobby, on the arcade parts hobby. It's what got me to just really love all the details and and how you can adjust the experience. So it all comes back to this. Um, I'm going to put that temporarily there for now. And I'll put it nice and neat. Okay. Put the parts that it comes with and then i'll clean them up and make it nice for you later all right so we've already seen um that now this is uh another this is my japanese body um and i've you know you've taken out the bolts it's unmounted the pieces are out you can see that's a circular bottom there okay so a couple points here Golden lever is so customizable, and you don't have to do these customizations, but understanding, let's talk about the micro switches. So we're going to go back to the bottom, and then we're going to move our way to the shaft assembly. Uh, these are the micro switches. These are the leaf levers, okay? And I've talked about customized spacing. Now, before understanding customized spacing, it's under good to understand how these... Um, these switches are put on there and you won't have to deal with this it's just good to know um, obviously they're bolted each by two bolts on each micro switch and inside here you can see these are the nuts in these slots these are the nuts that they're corresponding to this is why we can um, we can jank them a little we can move this micro switches a bit and that's what creates the variable spacing that's important for things like the short square setup Okay, um, so it's important to know that if you ever, ever want to change the micro switches, which there's so many wonderful options, if you ever want to go there, I don't recommend going through that deep dive. But if you, I mean, I, I do at some point, but not right now. But if you ever go there, it's important to know that like when you take the switches out, you're going to need to not lose these the nuts that are inside these slots here. Um, I use something like like this tool 
to kind of just kind of hold it in place. But sometimes I just use my finger. When I unscrew or screw in um, a micro switch, I just keep my fingernail like here and that usually is enough. Or like even like here like this. And I just, and then I'll hold it upside down and make sure that the nut's not coming out. And when I unscrew or screw them in. Um, when you adjust them, you're not going to go that far. When when you adjust these micro switches for spacing, and you, and you do need to know it because you're using an asymmetrical setup in the short square setup, uh, that's specific to Adam, not to anybody just buying a gold lever. Most people using gold lever don't have to touch the, the switch spacing at all. It is great as it is, and all you have to do is tighten it every once in a while. But even that adjustment is easy. Uh, the complication comes from using the short square collar, which is not symmetrical, in which we're making one switch space differently than the others. Uh, we'll get to that soon. Right now, this is a Japanese setup, so this is pretty simple. Um, but whenever you make uh, adjustments to the spacing, you're only going to turn, you're going to use that same, um, that same Phillips screwdriver, but hopefully JIS, um, that has like, that's more uh, square, um, not round. You don't want like the pointy end one. You want like a flat end one for the JIS because you want them to be secure. You don't want to strip any of your bolts. And so you just do like a quarter turn, like a quarter turn is like, do like that much. You just, just a quarter turn. So you do like a quarter turn each and then you can make the adjustment. We use these spacers. We use these spacers to make them. And on the diagram, there's a diagram on that booklet that will show you all the switches. Um, and you can see there's no notch on the 15 millimeter. There's one notch on the 15.5 millimeter. There's two notches in that middle circle. On the 16 millimeter, 16 and a half millimeter has three notches, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four on the 17 millimeter. And then you have this minus and plus, and I'll talk about how those work. But for our sneak preview on switch spacing, um, let's go back to the Japan setup says, Japan setup has spacing of 15.5 millimeter. So we look at this diagram, 15.5 millimeter is one notch. So we're looking for the single notch. That's four, that's three, that's two, and that's one. So the one, right? What about these things? Normally we have the bolts in as you saw when the mount, when it was mounted. And so normally it would fit over and then this 15.5 is perfectly fitting in there. Normally it's gonna be bolted, we'll show it later, but it's not gonna be this way on the black setup because I've set that to a custom spacing, but this is 15.5 millimeter, pretty perfect. It's all lined up. I don't need to make any adjustment. That's how good it is. And, it's, and they stay as long as you tighten these really good whenever you're making your spacing adjustments. That's how it works, you get the right size, right? But if we got the 15 millimeter, the one with no holes, then we'd see that it's like, it fits too well, right? And that's because there's a gap between them, just a little bit, right? So 15 is smaller than 15.5. That's how we do the, the spacing, it's so good. And uh, very easy to do. The only complicated one is that we're doing the short square and we're gonna get to that. Okay, so I've shown you the shaft already. Um, we'll set these spacers aside, we'll set these grommets aside. Um, but let's go into the the bottom part of the shaft here. So Okay. Well, how to remove the shaft actually. This is always fun. Um, get back, I'm going to put this back together. So again, hope you're enjoying this journey with me on the Golden Lever. I know it's a long video, um, but um, just ask me any direct question and I'll send you answers right away. Um, the only reason I was kind of hesitant, like it took me a while to make this video is because I know that this video is going to take a while to go over all the parts of this. But honestly, uh, when you actually do it, it doesn't take that much time. I'm just trying to make sure to go into detail for you. You only need um, those two screwdrivers really like, you need three, right? 
a, the thick flat head screwdriver. And actually, if you're taking it with you to Evo, I like the stubby ones. The stubby flat screwdrivers are awesome. Uh, those ones just fit in, in your hand, they're stubby, um, but they're just so useful for like events, for like whenever you wanna tighten the ball top or remove it. So stubby flat screwdriver. Then you want like uh, a small precision flathead screwdriver. And I'll show you why when we disassemble a shaft assembly, when we remove the E-clip. And then um, you want, uh, and then you want that JIS Phillips screwdriver. You want one that perfectly fits and it will work on the mounting screws and it will work on the micro switches if you ever have to make those adjustments. Okay, so those three screwdrivers are what you need. Okay. So we're getting back to our um, Japanese, to our pre-built golden lever for this example here. Um, at this point, I should just tighten these bolts. I'm gonna tighten these bolts. I'm probably going to refer to a diagram because I don't want this to get too messy as a video and it will be overly long, but I think the diagram is going to make sense. I'm going to try to make it very, very clear, but I am going to show the physical uh, lever as well. So we're going to do a, I'm going to try to make this a little more, make more sense. All right. Um, there is a final tool that you do need if you're ever going to make changes to your lever and that is you also need i recommend having pliers absolutely needle nose pliers preferred okay and i'll explain it right now i'm just tightening the it's kind of dumb, I didn't put it on the mounting plate, but I'm just kind of putting it, the enclosure back together, the body back together tightly. I should have put the mounting plate on anyways. It's okay, I have all the time to do this for you. Okay, so we're back and we are looking at this part here. So I'm gonna tell you how everybody has their own ways of removing uh, Eclipse. My way of removing Eclipse, they're a pain, but... Um, I've mentioned using um, a more precision, small flathead screwdriver. So on my set, there's this one, which is the thickest one. I actually use the second thickest one. And it's because what I do is I would put it like right in here. You see how there's like three teeth to an eclip, he, like the north, east, and the west, right? And south is just nothing there, okay? So I insert the precision screwdriver, the small flat head, and I might even use a smaller one, but actually this one was perfect, the second small, the second largest. So this one, it just goes with the screwdriver, I put it in here, and I simply twist. Now, it's not just that I just put it there and twist, but on the assembly, what's important, see that south end here? I would put, my thumb on this is called the ring this white part is the ring under the ring is the actuator and in this case this is a bushing actuator i love it the ball the bearing actuator by golden lever i love these and then underneath that is a bushing which is a white a big white piece like this and they all point to the end they all point this way so if the lever is here they're pointing south uh, they're pointing down. And if I have the lever upside down, they're pointing up, right? They're pointing to the E-clip. And that's a good rule of thumb to know because this ring is more like a cone and the cone points to the E-clip. Similarly, underneath there is this, um, I'll show it in the picture, but let's go to the picture now. 
So you can kind of see how it goes that underneath the body on the shaft there is a spring and then there's the bushing then there's the bearing actuator that black piece then there's that ring that i just told you about and then there's the e-clip okay the correct way is to have them all pointed down the core same thing the core as you can see there's a grommet and core here that core is pointing to the e-clip and then underneath that core there's a spring that you can't see that's right there that doesn't really matter where it's pointed and when it comes to the golden lever, the spring is not has not has doesn't really have to do with the tension of moving the lever in directions. What it does is actually, it's what creates the resistance to um, so that your lever doesn't spin much. And so right now, the default one, it spins a little, but almost not. Um, but then there's a hard, if you put a hard spring in there, it just, like, that thing is just really hard to turn. And so if you really want it to not turn, it's pretty great at that but I, I like where it's at on the medium spring okay so there's a spring and then there's this white part again um, there's a white part again here that that is the bushing is what we call it because you're gonna be using a bearing setup then there's the bearing this is a gold bearing but you're using a black bearing and the black bearing is pretty awesome um, and requires less maintenance and then there is the ring and then there's an E-clip there, and then of course the end of the shaft. So, I hope that makes sense to you. Um, so putting it together is gonna be like, you're gonna wanna follow this diagram, understand the mistakes, you know. Now he says, black bearing can be installed on both sides. There's no specific orientation, but on the, on the golden, um, like on the golden bearing, it actually does matter. There is a direction, but on the black bearing, up or down doesn't really matter for the bearing itself. But it does matter for the bushing and it matters for the ring. And the reason it matters for the ring is actually it's easier to remove the, the E-clip if you have it correct. It's harder to remove the E-clip if you put the, the ring upside down. Um, and you can kind of see here the parts. There's the handles, there's the shafts, there's the core, there's the grommets. And these are actually, there's full-size actuators that are more traditional actuators that a lot of Korean lovers are used to, which is replaces, is like the whole thing. It's the whole bearing, like the bearing part is normally the actuators are like this. They're just a whole big cylinder piece. Um, but the bearing actuators, these are the bearings themselves. And they, and in my experience, I love them a lot. I, I like them a lot. They create a lot of, um, it feels smoother. Is it a placebo? I don't know, but to me, it definitely seems to work. Um, definitely prefer that buttery smooth feel that I have in Golden Lover overall. Um, and so these bearings uh, mean a, matter a lot to me. And so they're also a good point that because because they that black bearing is what's actually touching. So what's happening there is the black bearing is the thing that it's the only thing touching the, the hinge levers of the micro switches. It's doing all the actuation itself. And, and what this assembly does is it keeps it separate from the spring and well, it keeps it separate from the bushing, right? The bushing itself is moving around, but the only point of contact is like, there's not this, it separates another layer of friction out of it by keeping this uh, bearing actuator as the only thing that's really interacting with the micro switches. Um, the rest are kind of separate, and if you keep it lubricated, these things move very, very, it just moves so slick. So, for the type of lubricant that you would do is, um, for Golden Lever in general, if you only had one kind of lubricant, I would recommend a silicone, then definitely a silicone lubricant. The most common is the, if you, if you go to Amazon, you can look up, like, Honda, um, silicone grease, um, Specifically, it's Shin Etsu, S H I N space E T S U. Shin Etsu grease is like the is the standard. It's what's used in Sanwa. It's what's used in uh, Seimitsu. It's used in a lot of levers. But um, Golden Lever likes to use Molly Coat, M O L Y K O T E, and that's also really really good. It's a it's a more um, it's more fluid, and I, I like it a lot too. So I, I I've used I've used them both in different applications. Um, I do like Molly Coat on the Golden Lever. Um, but I, I only use it on pla anything interacting with plastic. So if I use a black bearing, I'd use it there. 
and I use it, you know, even, um, I put it basically anywhere that's interacting with that. Um, but for, but they also have metal and metal uh, lubricants. If you, if you were to switch to using like the golden bearing or using the, any of the metal actuators, then I would use those and, and you just kind of put them in. Um, but you would put the silicone also on the shaft because of how it, because of how it interacts with, um, with the collar, right? So this is metal on plastic. Anytime you're doing anything on plastic, you want to use the silicone grease. Um, you could also put it, you know, technically on the bobbin if you wanted, but um, not as necessary, but you can. Um, but you could, definitely a good spot to put it though is the core to the, um, to the bushing um, using a silicone. Again, you can just use silicone everywhere, silicone grease. Um, and the cheapest way to get the Shinetsu grease is actually on focusattack.com. Uh, make an order there for parts, but they sell 45 cents. Um, it's like the size of a, of a chocolate chip, but that's more than enough. Like that would last you like two years. <laughs> so, you know, maybe even more uh, in your use case, but, but and they, they call it just a dab. So just look up dab on focusattack.com. Focus attack is a term from Street Fighter 4. And that is a that's basically Shinetsu grease, but they're selling it in like chocolate chip sized amounts, and it's perfect. And in a nice container that you can just set aside in your toolkit, and then just just pop open the thing and just you know make sure your hands are clean, dab your finger on it, and apply it. Or if you want, use a tissue or something. But it's really good. Um, yeah. Uh, so again, now how do you assemble it? Okay. When you assemble the shaft assembly, again, you put everything in the order, and then you're going to want to, again, just like in the, when I when we took it out, we want to find this, it's, it's a real pain in the butt to do, but when you hold it together, you really want to push down on the ring, and everything is spring together. And then when you push down on the ring, with your other hand, you're going to put the E-clip kind of in place on the opposite side of where your thumb is, right? put it there and then that and you should be able to push it in enough to kind of keep it held there and then you're going to want to use the pliers the needle nose pliers to basically go like one point here one point on the e-clip here avoid touching the switches and then just clamp it so that this e-clip just goes pop it just pops right over but you're going to have to hold the assembly down you're going to have to put pressure here but that that's where the spring works with you if you do it right it's very easy for me once i got used to doing it um but basically i put the assembly together and then put my thumb here and my my thumbnail is actually against the shaft because it's got to hold everything in place and then just you know use a needle nose plier get the e-clip just in place then i can remove my finger when that e-clip is enough in there um and then just clamp the e-clip back into place. So easier said than done. I'm here to help you, buddy. So if you have trouble with this, let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll try to help explain it. Everybody else has different techniques, but again, how I remove it, you want to hold this assembly together. You do not want to, when you remove the e-clip, hold it together. Keep your thumb here, make sure it's secure, because if you don't, you're gonna have an e-clip and your parts flying everywhere. You might lose your ring. It might fly across the room and you spend forever looking for it on a carpet or on the hard floor. Um, similarly, you might look for a spring. You might look for all the parts of your assembly. It's just not fun. Um, e-clips are like the bane of everyone's existence in the lever community. Uh, we have some levers that don't deal with them, but still, uh, they're still the most solid, but yeah, they're just a pain to deal with. So again, when you remove it, put your thumb here, hold the assembly together. I, I actually have my fingers like here, but even if it's on a mounting plate, uh, and I, I can remove it while it's still mounted in the thing. It's not the best to do unless I was only working on the bottom half of the assembly, but, um, but I've done that. I've done some uh, maintenance, like lubricating and everything while this thing was still mounted to the controller. 
um, push it down, hold it down, and then stick a micro flathead screwdriver into one of these gaps between the teeth, between two teeth, one, two, three, right? Here's one spot, here's another spot. Any of those two will do. Put it in there and then just twist the micro screwdriver and this thing will slowly pop off. And then you can, and then you just, you'll, you'll understand how to pop it off if you need to, how to pop off the E-clip. And then just, don't just let go, just carefully uh, remove remove this and take parts out bit by bit. So, and you'll, it'll be it'll be great. It'll be fine. Okay, um, let's talk about that short square collar because that's the big piece to finish off our golden lever talk. Um, over here, we've got the setup that I've been testing for you and built for you, and I think you're gonna love it. What is a short square collar? A short square collar has one direction that is shorter than the others. Now, that's fine and good to restrict the movement of the lever, but you're gonna have to adjust the switch spacing for it to act the way you want it so that it feels right. Otherwise, you're just making it hard for yourself to actually input, right? Okay. So on this lever here, I'm gonna turn this upside down. Oh, let's go right side up again and let's talk about it then, I feel. So this setup that I built for you is, um, it's a short square and it's a black body. So the black body, and it's got a good tension in there. Um, I believe, yeah, it's I put in a, a much higher tension grommet, uh, dual tension so that it's got the easier diagonals. And it's a black body, so it's so it's got more resistance. That said, that more resistance, it's like on on our Japanese setups, our throw is so low that we don't feel this benefit as much as the Tekken players do with their with their large throw setups. But we do feel it still. Okay. So on this setup, moving left down, left right, left right down, is all normal, relatively. I've actually got this setup to be a more tighter throw a little bit. And then up. I can barely move to tilt up, but I've also made it actuate a lot. Um, sometimes it's possible to try to do up, and if you push too lightly, it won't actuate enough. But I've made as much adjustments as I feel will not damage the micro switch to make sure that it's actuating and it's working really well. However, if we were to ever make the short direction down, I, I would actually risk um, risk it and make it even more sensitive because you just can't afford to you can't like up you're gonna have no problem now um for my technique i prefer ball top on this setup because what has happened with a short up is literally the way i use my thumb is different when i f so it's gonna take you a day to get used to the short square setup and part of that adjustment the first day you might experience what i did which is I found myself pushing so hard on up just by default because of the normal way I would push up on any other setup that like my hand got a little sore, right? But it took it took less than a day for me to get used to this. And before I knew it, without thinking about it, my thumb just kind of knew how much tension to apply. And it was literally, it went from pushing here at the midpoint, like near the band, near the, the, the middle part of the ball. It went from doing this to just doing this. Like this is like what I do when I do up, and it's great, <laughs> and, it, and it and it works great for for like the way that I play Virtua Fighter, right? So suddenly it's you know it's doing really good, and I really like it. And then suddenly, actually, some things like this actually became a little. This got actually affected in the positive way. This down left, down left. So I think you're gonna like this setup, but I think it's gonna take a day to get used to. And again, when I first did it, oh, my thumb was getting sore because I was slamming it down here because that's what I do on normally, right? But then suddenly my technique adjusted to the setup itself and it's really good. Um, and uh, we can talk more about other asymmetrical, but let's just talk about just this today. So the short square setup and in the short square setup today, the way we've got set up is, um, is that up is the short direction. So what did we do? So part one of that was the collar. 
as we've mentioned, and it has an SS on the upper right corner. Now we're looking at the underside of this and it's the switch spacing. So the switch spacing, now the wiring, this is important. You're gonna see it on there, but I'm just gonna give you the shortcut answer. Um, when green, you want the green wire to point down. Um, that's pointing down. That doesn't mean it's the switch for down, but it, but you just want the green wire pointing south. And then you want the yellow wire pointing north, okay? That's that's the setup you want for your for your harness for when you're hooking up the harness and everything, okay? And when you when you mount it back in, that's kind of where you want those those uh, those wires to be. Now those wires are different, right? So even though this green is pointing down, this green is corresponding with um, with going right, okay? Um, because when it's upside down. All right, now let's take a look. Let's not screw our brains up so much. Right, so yeah, going right. So what, that's what the green switch is for, right? And that's because we're pushing the leaf, the, the hinge lever. So we're pushing the hinge lever, and when we push right, it's that, it's that green switch, right? So which, but the direction that we changed was up. So which one was up, right? Up is this one here, the orange, right? It'll look like it's the bottom right here, this, this switch here. Up was the one that had to be changed for the, sh for the, um, for the short. There's a couple of things. When you do a short square setup, this setup specifically, you want to generally increase the actuator size or, and or, uh, reduce the spacing. Sometimes just reducing the spacing is not enough. Um, the actuator is a big part of it. You'll you'll end up making other directions more sensitive, and you know. But what's the risk? The risk is also that if we go too far, we can end up like bending the 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 hinge levers, right? Like if we ended up pushing the hinge the hinge levers past the point of the micro switch, we will end up bending them and that will affect our performance, right? Does that make sense? Like this is down and if I, and if down, if we over, if we made down go too close, right? Um, the throw still lets us move pretty far. The thing is the throw on up is not letting us move far. So that's why we need a greater actuator and we need the micro switch spacing adjusted. So. Uh, earlier, you saw that on the standard Jap J uh, standard Japanese setup, it's 15.5 millimeter spacing. But let's take a look at what our spacing is here. 15.5 was one, right? Um, chances are I went to 15, and 15 would be that. so. 15.5 should be what it is for the others, unless I increased it. So let's see what I did. So here's the 15.5. And you can see those bolts that are mounted in, right? Yeah. So, and you can see a lot of the switches are at the 15.5, except for this one, right? So this one, I can't put it down here because, but the others are, right? If I, and I can do a reverse. I can go, let's reverse it and flip it. Yeah, like that. Right? So we've got 15.5 on, Basically, these three switches are at 15.5, just like normal, like they were before, but I adjusted. Um, let's get the 15.0, and it's not the only thing I did. What did I disappear? Oh, I have it right here, okay. So then, what I had to do was move this one first off. I put this in, and then I moved the switch to fit the 15.0, right? And and it's 15.0, it's exactly there, but there is another tweak that I made. Um, so if we look at our diagram here, it says um, minus and plus, right? Uh, sorry. Okay, so my spacing tilt the switch away from the actuator and make it less sensitive. Tilt the switch closer to the actuator to make it more sensitive, we use the plus. I use the plus, the reason was, was we have pretty much made the spacing as little as we're gonna be tolerable. And 
that up though, it was feeling like that some of the time it was not actuating, right? Because some of the time it just wasn't moving enough. So what I did was we rotated this switch slightly to make it go whoop like that. And the way we did it is we used this plus spacer, okay? And we use this plus spacer and we put it in, we don't shove it in, we don't make it, we don't force it as much, but we put it in and we know that we're gonna make it move it this way. So we, we loosened just this one and we we pushed this switch in accordingly according to this thing, just enough to where it ended up adjusting. Okay, checking one, two, one, two. This is part two. Um, so we are talking about the switch spacing and how we adjusted from making this switch spacing go inward like this. Uh, I accidentally hit the button on my phone that, that stopped the recording. So I'm gonna have to put these two together. Anyways, um, so again, to recap, this switch, this switch, and this switch, easily set, we just put in the 15.5 spacer and we, and we loosen them just with a quarter turn, just a quarter turn, a little bit, not much more than that, on each of the screws. And then we put them in place, put lined them up with the spacer, tightened it up really tight, and they're in place. These switches are at the correct place, 15.5, but we're using short square. So, this micro switch needed to be moved closer so it would actually work uh, because our throw on the up direction is so much smaller. So we made this 15.0, which is the smallest size available. And then that was, but that it still performed great, but we wanted it to perform better. We want to actuate even more than it was. So we used this plus spacer to make it more sensitive by, t by basically adjusting so that this micro switch was tilted a little bit towards the, towards the um, actuator. What that does is that makes the up direction even more sensitive. And now that's how we make those adjustments. Now, if you decide you like the black body, but you don't like um, short square, it's an easy fix. You can change it to like the Japanese one where you just set all of these to 15.5 default. You don't need to use the plus or minus to get it back to that. You just, you know, put the spacer in place, loosen these, loosen these just quarter turn each, move the switch at the correct spot, tighten them really tight, you're done. Well, you're partly there. The other part is you just change the collar, change the collar back to the normal square collar. You can just use the one from your Japanese one, put it in place here and boom, you've got the setup like that, but on the black body and with whatever tension or other settings you have. So that the, the switch spacing, it, we went through a lot there, but it's actually as simple as that. Um, that said, whenever you mount dismount, it's good to have a picture. It's good to know again, um, where this goes in here. This is the bottom of my case. This is the top. It's upside down. So left, right is going to be confusing, but we just know that the green wire is pointing down. Okay. Now, finally, um, if your golden lever does not perfectly fit into your, um, your Hori Real Arcade Pro, um, your your HRAP N, if it doesn't fit perfectly, and I believe it will, I believe it totally will, but if it does not, nor it is very normal that if this is the problem, the wire sticking out, the, the prong sticking out from the micro switches, if this is the problem, it is totally okay to bend them. Totally okay to bend them and, and you know, use them bent. It's perfectly normal, perfectly fine. They are designed to be able to do that. It's a standard practice. Um, so if they don't fit, then you can bend the connector. It's okay. All right. Um, you don't want to break them off, but if you break them off, I'll, I'll get you more switches. But um, but generally, uh, I, I don't know people that have really broken them off. Um, but if it doesn't fit, you can bend the prongs. It is a normal standard practice. Um, and you don't have to be afraid of that. When you're assembling your harness, when you're hooking them up, and I'm, I'm probably going to just hook it up for you, to be honest. I think I'm going to hook up the harness so you don't have to worry about it. But if you are hooking up the harness, 
uh, you can see that there are three prongs on the micro switch. There's the outside, and then there's the two mains that are sticking out from the normal. The outside one is a ground, so you, you just plug in the blacks there, and then the, um, the black connectors. And then the wires that are colored, then you're connecting on any one of these, but I always put it in the middle one. So it's just a habit, and I think most people connect it that way. So that's, uh, that's how you put the harness on. I hope this helps you understand your golden lever, and I will definitely go over more with you. Um, we can go into more details about any topic, um, but now let's talk about some of the buttons uh, that I've sent to you. And I hope you understand your lever. I hope you really like this setup. Um, again, I think you should uh, use, use the normal ball top first, um, especially use the Japanese setup first and use the ball top. From there, maybe after a day or two, then you can try this setup, and I think you'll like it too, but it's different. But you are gonna need time on this setup. Whether it's in Japan or here, if you decide to use this black setup, you're gonna need some time on it to get used to and that your technique adjusts. Um, but it, it only took me less than a day, okay? And I actually really like it. Like, to be honest, I've grown to really like it, but uh, we'll see what happens when I go back to other setups, and we'll see if I prefer those or I prefer this, but this is, been pretty fantastic for Virtual Fighter. I have a feeling Gentleman Thief would like down to be the short direction. Um, but, um, and I think, uh, I think there's a case, to, I, I think I can talk to Wasus about, uh, about having like, uh, I, I heard he's experimented before with like, with double uh, short square, like rectangle basically, um, where there's up and down are like short. So, um, when we talked about handles, actually, there is another factor. Um, so when we're playing player one side, a lot of times we like to have shorter throw. But when we play player two side, I found that shorter throw becomes more difficult. So a big factor in, um, in that player one, player two balance is also the throw, in my experience. So if you go, like, the, the, I, I believe that the reason the Sanwa throw is as big as it is is to make sure that play that the leftward directions are also being good, like the right directions, and that so it might take a slight hit on the play on the right directions, just so that it can have <coughs> sorry, <coughs> just so it can have a balanced experience on the left as well as the right, and so that because the the main thing is you don't want to kill your left your left direction performance. So this is still a very tight throw, right? But but I found, uh, yeah, the Japanese throw, the throw on the Japanese is really good. Um, it's kind of why I hesitate to go as far as like a 12 millimeter shaft. But um, but it's definitely each person has their preference. Finding your preference is the key, and Golden Lever lets you really find your preference. Let's talk about buttons. Okay, on my setup, I've got Crown 202s are actually my favorite buttons personally, but they're not my most recommended, but they are recommended highly. But um, but I, there is one I recommend more. I'm sending you some crowns. So I am gonna send you a full set of Crown 202s because they do match the aesthetic. They are black gold, uh, so they are gold rims. And you, you screw them on. They're gold rims with the black caps, okay? And that's because I think they that just is just a gorgeous fit with your Hori Real Trade Pro N. Okay, your Nor. Um, Nor layout is also perfect with screw and buttons. It's better than than Vlix layout for screw and buttons because there's no overlap. Um, it's not too tight. Nor layout. This is Nor layout as well. These these eight buttons are in the Nor layout, and I love the Nor layout for Virtua Fighter. So your your Real Arcade Pro N is a Nor is the N is for Nor, which is Namco's layout. And I really like it. I think it's ideal for VF. Um, there's a good spacing too. Uh, this is actually a little closer, but I think yours has got more of a gap. So, um, yeah. Or actually, no. This is about. This is the correct. It's just that the iris makes it look smaller. So, anyhow, um, crown buttons. You can hear that they're kind of quiet. They're a little muted compared to a Sanwa. Sanwas are really loud, right? Um, Crown 202s especially are nice on the 30 millimeter, which is the size we use anyways. And I love how they feel. They are keyboard switches in them, and they actuate wonderfully, and yet they're also still a little quieter, but they also still have that hard plastic feel 
that I love from Sanwa buttons. Um, this hard feel is great. It's still got the hard feel despite having a muted, kind of muted sound. It's not the quietest, but it's not. But actually, when you play, this is really good. Uh, it meets my requirements for competitive play for VF because the problem with playing lever and buttons on VF is when you do tech roll, this is tech roll. When you do a manual roll, this is manual roll, right? When you're waking up quickly, it's like this, right? Uh, when you're doing rising attack, when you're rolling into rising attack, but when you're doing tech roll quick rise, it's just this, right? And so you kind of want to fake it, um, but it doesn't sound the same. So your opponent can hear like kind of what your wake up option is and they have enough time to respond to it that like this is the weakness of offline play VF using loud Sanwa buttons for me, right? Um, but, and so you end up having to learn how to make, have a technique of just always making everything sound like this, right? Um, it's not an issue on hitbox style layouts because hitbox, you're listening, like, this is the directions. This is, this is the wake up option. They sound the same. <laughs> so, so on hitbox, like, it's not an issue. On WASD, slight issue, actually. Uh, WASD, because WASD sounds, using keyboard buttons, they sound totally different from using these right side buttons. And so it's, but it's less of an issue as lever and buttons, right? So lever and buttons gives away your wake up options. Crown 202s really mitigate that dramatically. So again, um, I'm going to be sending you these, uh, these gold rim black button, uh, a set of eight, uh, crown 202s. If you decide this is the one you want to keep, just let me know, you know, um, the pricing is not too bad. Uh, pricing on the crown 202s are really like very close to the one. They're not, they're not bad. They're, they're not cheap, the cheapest, but they're not the most expensive either. And the normally brand new will have this kind of sticker that's just, it's not gonna stay on, so you're just gonna take them off. But they're there to just kind of keep it clean before getting on. But these, even the ones without them, have almost have pretty much almost never been used. They were just more like I assembled them. Um, and the good thing is, is I save you the cost of assembling them because uh, taking out the, the plungers for metallics like gold and silver, just the plungers, not the, not the rims, the plungers are very sensitive. They're easy to break um, on metallics. Um, on any other Crown 202 plungers, that's not really an issue. The, these blacks have never really been a risk of breaking. It's only only the metallic the crows because of the process that they go through that makes them very weak and brittle. Um, Sanwa buttons, however, uh, typically do break. So I love Sanwa, but those plungers just always break, especially on any push button, on any of the snap-ins. Okay, there's another set of buttons for it that I'm getting for you, and that is drum roll. These are the gamer finger buttons. Um, now I've got black, I'm gonna send them to you as black caps, black plungers with the black body. Some will be snap-in, which this is, where it just goes pop, you pop it in place, and then you have to kind of push these out to pull them out. Um, and also, but some will have, um, this will be screw in with this band around it. Now this one is a clear, uh, clear rim. I, again, I think the best fit for you is going to be the black, uh, the black rim. So that's why I'm gonna be rebuilding uh, some of the buttons to be all black rim for you with black top. Now, most of your buttons that I sent to you are gonna look like this though. They're going to have the sticker. We love these Chinese character stickers on the golden lever. In fact, the tradition for a lot of people when they do a build is to kind of keep the stickers on and then take photos of the build with the stickers on. I definitely for playing, I, I like them off. You can keep them on, but they won't stay on forever, but they'll stay on a long time. These ones will stay on a long time, but I, the feel of the buttons, you know, without is the best feel. Now, I think you're gonna like the Crown 202 buttons right away because you're coming from Sanwa and it's gonna have a feel that's similar to that. I think you need to definitely try Gamer Fingers for like at least two days, uh, minimum one full day, but at least two days because I think they're gonna grow on you. I think you're gonna have a similar experience as me. When I first played with Gamer Finger, 
they felt kind of cheap. I was like, this, what's all the hype about? This feels like a cheap button. There's no sound coming from it. This is kind of soft on the top. Um, the screw in portion definitely looks cheap, right? Uh, they look better now than they used to. Um, and I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the octagon, but it, it grows. I, I like it now, but I'm not the biggest fan of the octagon. The octagon is just not my favorite look, right? So, um, some people love it. For me, not my favorite look. But Gamer Finger is the most recommended button for me, and why is that? And I've, I've made a video about this before, but I'm going to say it again. Um, the fact is, the performance wins me over. It is quieter than, it is a lot quieter than the Crown 202s, so that meets also the competition test of sound. It's just absolutely, it's just really quiet. Okay. The throw is just, is a really nice amount. The performance, I would say, is about the same when we're pushing down on the button as the Crown 202s. Um, they both use keyboard switches. It's easier to disassemble these, though, than it is the Crown 202s. Um, but the this Surface, when at first, when I thought was kind of soft and cheap, turns out to be a really wonderful feature. It's wonderfully slick, and yet, like, my fingers don't really get stuck to it, but they feel just right. And the most important part, the rebound. Um, when you when you do negative action, when you let go of a button, it's better. It's better than all the other buttons in my experience. For me, it feels like it's way more responsive. So the situation where that's amazing is Akira's knee. I feel like with gamer finger buttons compared to pretty much everything else, um, Akira's knee, I, if I did it like a hundred times, I, I think I would, I would pull it off a lot more on these buttons than if I did on almost any other button. And it feels good. Your fingers don't hurt at all when you do the when you do the Akira knee technique of slamming your thumb across the the button like this. Um, it doesn't have like a, a rough angle or a stuck spot. Um, but the negative action nails it, and it's not a surprise then that Paul six eight KDMD, uh, one of the strongest secure players in America now. And Setsuna Go, who also one of the strongest secure players right now in North America, are both using gamer finger buttons. They both made the time and effort to get gamer finger buttons. I'm spoiling you because I'm sending you a set, uh, but gamer finger buttons are not easy to obtain. Um, they're, they're get, they're, they will probably start to get easier to obtain against me, but right now they're very hard to get. Um, a lot of players have just simply switched over to get, or a lot of players just start getting the Punk Workshop buttons because the Gamer Finger buttons are still hard to get. Uh, I'm sending you a set, uh, black on black. But uh, if you want to see what others look like, here's white on black. I think it looks gorgeous. Um, your setup actually might really love the dark blue. This is the dark blue on the crystal, the clear. Um, but I think like this dark blue on black would look really good on your... Um, Real Arcade Pro uh, Noir. So, yeah. Uh, the yellow is a little too bright. So, um, yeah. I'm sending you a set of Gamer Fingers. I'm sending you a set of Crown 202s. Let me know the ones that you really want. The Gamer Fingers are more expensive. Not just because the base price is more expensive. But because the shipping. Because I, I generally I import them from Japan. Is how I get them. And, um... But the... And so I do include that cost because it cost me quite a bit to get them, but it's worth it. And I think the ground two, the gamer fingers are my most recommended, even if the crown two twos are actually my favorite personally. But I think for competition, these are like just, I think they're second to none, to be honest. And I think it's just a matter of getting used to that difference in profile. And I think you're going to love it. But I'm sending you both because, who knows, you might end up being like me where you're like, I just love using the Crown 202 so much. Um, but also because the aesthetic is probably going to, might win you over as well. Um, but I but I assure you, if you use these, uh, these Gamer Finger, I think you give it the fair amount of time, you're going to find that you're going to love the performance on them. You're going to love uh, everything about it, and you're going to get used to the feel. So... Please give them all a good amount of time. I don't mind that they're used when I, whichever ones you decide not to keep, but, um, but I want you to find, I mean, for all of this, the levers, the buttons, I want you to find what's perfect for you. Um, that's what makes this hobby insanely fun. That's what makes it worth all this time, money, investment in it. 
So I'm hoping to help you get the best performance and also help you get the best satisfaction. Um, and there's one last thing, which is, you can see this uh, dust washer here. And that's the Murakuma Arts one. I'm sending you uh, one that I think is perfect for your setup. And that is this white and black. This black, which is a little bit of white. Um, and I think you're gonna like it. I do have an all black, but I couldn't find it. And I do think the all black might be the best fit for your for your controller, but I do think this one's a wonderful fit. Um, it comes with this special insert from, you're not gonna use it with the golden lever, but this special insert is wonderful on the Sanwa and Hori sticks and Seimitsu sticks because uh, it'll make this thing fit tighter on those. But this, uh, the hole in the middle is big enough so that it works really well with the golden lever because these, these shafts are thicker. And so this thing works wonderful. As you can see, it works really good with the standard and even if you increased it and used 12 millimeter, I think it works perfectly fine. So I think this this thing just works with everything. Um, but I think you're gonna really like this on your on your controller. Um, if I if I find the all black, I'll bring it to Japan because maybe you'll want to use that one um, where it's the same thing, but it's just like there's no white. Um, there is a blackout where it looks like this, but like. This looks all black, but if you had like a bright light underneath it, then like you could then you could see the believe in your technique. But I think this just looks really. I think this is gonna pop nicely on yours. So I, I hope you love it. I hope you like what I've sent you. I hope this video makes sense to you. And um, and yeah, um, I'm excited to see you in Japan, Adam. And for everybody else, thank you very much for following along. Um, I think you can see why I really love the golden lever. And um, yeah. Everyone, happy gaming, and uh, I hope to see a lot of you at EVO Japan. Cheers.